Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to Central. My name is Justin, and we want to welcome you to our New Year's Eve online experience. And I'm so glad that you decided to join us today, whether you're in the Niagara region or you're around the world. I love that we get to still gather around this singular purpose of staying connected, staying connected to God and to one another. And so thank you so much for joining us today. Now, what's really special about today is we have all kinds of brand new content and stories sharing of of what God is doing here at Central. We're going to be taking communion together, and we have a New Year's message from Pastor Bill, and so we know that you're going to be encouraged as we celebrate what God is doing, and the reality is He is doing some amazing things that we have, you know, been thinking about this past year, and we're going to celebrate today, but we know you're going to be encouraged as well. Speaking of communion, we are going to be taking communion today, and so we want to invite you at this time just to go ahead and grab something to eat, something to drink doesn't matter what it is. The point is we want you to participate today as we celebrate what God has done in and through us this past year. And so we're gonna be taking that later in the experience today. Now, if you would like prayer today or you need any information, we want you to reach out to interact with our online hosts, or you could text us here at the church, 905-937-5610. We'd love a chance to connect with you. And also, if you wouldn't mind sharing this experience as it goes a long way in getting the word out about what God is doing at Central. And that's our heart. We want as many people connected to what God is doing as possible. Lastly, we just want to thank you for your generosity. This past year, because of you, we were able to continue to help thousands of people get connected to God and others. And so we do want to let you know that if you are watching in real time today, that today, December the 31st, is your last day to give online and to receive a tax receipt for the 2023 season. And you can do that by heading over to centralcc.ca slash give. And we just want to thank you again for being the generous church that you are. We cannot do what we do without you. So with all that being said, let's get into our online experience. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. We hope you've come and you're ready to celebrate what God has done in your life. Let's focus on Him, of course. God, thank you for everything, for who you are, what you've done.
now on a throne of majesty the father's will complete he reigns in victory and see all things together for good for those who love him and Hebrews 11 verse 1 says for faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain in things we cannot see and I think sometimes or at least I have we paraphrase that verse in Romans to mean that everything will be good all the time but it actually says God will work things together for good God's not done until everything is good But that means that even in the hard times, in the bad times, in the sad times, He is working and He is in control and He's been good to us. And it's important in those times to remember all the times that God has been so good. So as we sing this next song, I want you to take a second to think of a time where God has been good to you, even if it's the breath in your lungs today, and to thank Him for that and to thank Him, even though you don't know what the future holds, but being certain that He's in control, that He's going to continue to be good to you.
to reflect on that and just hold to that truth that no matter what we're going through you are a good God and that will never change and so Lord we just give you all of our praise this morning you deserve all of the glory all of our adoration God we thank you for who you are a good good father to us so much for worshiping with us. You can grab a seat. My name is Audia. I am married to my wonderful husband and best friend, Farron, for 29 years. Together we have three children, two girls, one boy. I started coming to Central May of 2014. I had just been diagnosed with the chronic Lyme disease the month before. 
So I really did not want to come up. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to be in my bed. So I had to quit my jobs and was on medication four times per day, which was actually making me twice as sick as I felt before. So as a result of that, I was homebound for a year and a half. The doctor said I had no immunity at all. And she encouraged me to stay home, but I said, no, I'm going to be in the house of God, that's it. And so for me to be home, where when I was always out working, I started to become angry. And Ferran said to me, why don't you just take this time and just begin to look in the Word and see what God says about healing. And reluctantly, I started. And um, then I, I decided that, you know, the Scripture says that, you know, the Word of God would bring health to my navel and marrow to my bones. I would take the medication, and while I'm taking the medication, I'd be declaring, Lord, thank you that by your stripes I am healed. And instead of it getting better, it got worse. So I was at the point, I was so sick that in my head, I started, I started to plan my funeral because I just, I couldn't, I didn't feel like I had anything else to offer. And, but that morning I mustered up some strength <laughs> and I stopped and I go, God, what was the scripture again? And I heard 2 Kings 20 and verse 5. What that scripture said was, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayers, I've seen your tears, and behold, I will heal you. So I froze because I thought, oh my goodness, here I am screaming at God, telling him how angry I am that he's not listening. And he's telling me, he's speaking to me for himself, that he's heard me and he's healed me. Fast forward to June 25th, 2017. Um, it was at an encounter here at Central. Pastor Bill had asked us to come down to the front. And I was in so much pain, like my head felt as though there was a hammer on the inside of it, just pounding constantly. And as I stepped out into the aisle, I literally felt as though someone poured hot oil on my head. I could feel my energy started to rise within me, which I never had for, like I said, a year and a half. And I just started jumping, Pastor Bill, Pastor Bill, I'm healed, I'm healed. I didn't even tell him what was going on with me. Um, and that was the beginning of the turnaround. Since um, my healing, um, I have been in our church, the Lord been, like He would show me those people that are in need of healing. The Lord would say, okay, you just pray for that one. We don't know what they're going through. My take on it is if he's healed me of Lyme's disease, then he can heal you of whatever situation you're going through. He's no respecter of person. And if he's done it for me, he can do it for you. And you know, it, it does my heart well to see God change someone else's life because he did it for me. Well, today, as we come to the end of the year, we're gonna take communion together. And I'd love for you to take a moment, if you haven't already, to grab something to eat, grab something to drink, and we're gonna participate in this together. Now, while you're doing that, I was thinking about New Year's Eve. And if you're watching today in real time, that's tonight. And I was thinking about other than food, friends, family, and terrible TV programming, I feel like it's getting worse every year. Uh, there's usually some point where somebody pipes up and says something to the tune of, you know, what was your highlight of this past year? And what are you hoping for for this next year? And I was thinking about while I appreciate the sentiment of that, to me, it often feels a little bit surfacey as we try our best to, you know, summarize an entire year gone by and share some wishful thoughts about the new year, most of which stats say will probably break within the six weeks, first six weeks of 2024. I know I'm a big downer over here, but the problem is I think that life is short. And if you only pause once a year, it's easy to live a life lacking true meaning and purpose and direction. And so into that, we enter communion. And Paul says in the Bible, he says to do this often. And the question is, why? Why does he say to do it often? And I think the reason is really simple. It's because the point of communion is to remember, to look back on what's happened in our lives and what God has done, but it's also to align our future 
And the more times you do this, the better chance you have of living a direction-filled, purpose-filled, meaningful life. So Paul speaks to this in the book of Philippians chapter three, and he speaks to our past in verse seven. Here's what he says. He says, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage or rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I wanna know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. In other words, a great, as great as the, the past year was, or the goals that we achieved, as great as the things we experienced, or maybe we, you, know, you were here and, and you experienced some hard things or some difficult things this past year. No matter what you've experienced, they all fail in comparison to knowing Jesus. The older I get, the more I believe this to be true, that it's great that we have things that we accomplish, it's great that we have progress, it's great that we're moving forward and we have goals and things that we're aiming for. But compared to Jesus, Paul says they're actually rubbish. He says they're garbage. Compared to knowing him, compared to inviting him to lead you, to guide you, to change you into the person you were made, to lift the limits that you've put on yourself, to know him and be known by him has no higher purpose. So as you look back on this year, was Jesus lifted higher in your life at this point this year than he was last year? Do you know him more? Is he a higher priority in your life and in your family and in your home? And if not, communion is our opportunity to lift him up to the highest place again. So 1 Corinthians 11, here's what the Apostle Paul says again. He says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed, he took some bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's eat together. And as we do, let's invite Jesus to be the lead in our lives as we enter this new year. Then the Apostle Paul also goes on and he speaks towards our future. Here's what he says in Philippians 3 verse 12. He says, not that I've already obtained all these things or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. So brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I love this image here because it's an image of a marksman with a target, with crosshairs that are pointed towards that target. They're finely tuned and they're locked in towards that goal. And the reminder for me and for us, I believe, is that no matter how much life you've lived, that you're not done. The best years are not behind you. The invitation is to lean in, to press forward, not resting on your past or what you've learned or what you've experienced, but we strain ahead towards the prize of heaven. And the reminder is not to live for the temporary things, but for the eternal, not to settle for just the things that are physical, but that others would also experience the life that comes through Jesus here on earth. So I wanna ask you today, as you look forward to 2024, what are you aiming for? Are your goals earthly? Are they on the physical things, on the temporary things, or are they eternal? Because I wanna encourage you today as, as today is an opportunity to lift our eyes off the temporary things, the things that sometimes hold us back or limit us, to invite God's power and his presence to lead and to guide us into this next year. So 1 Corinthians 11 says this in verse 25, in the same way, after supper, Jesus, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so let's take this cup together. So 
So God, I thank you for every single person that's watching today, wherever they are in the world. And God, I thank you that you have not forgotten them. I thank you for the things that you've brought us through. Some of them are hard and some of them are great, but yet all of them fail in comparison to knowing you. Thank you, God, that we have the privilege of knowing you, that you came to remind us as a baby and to live your life through and to die on the cross for us that we could experience life and life to the fullest. I thank you today for that amazing reminder. But I also thank you for the future that we press on towards this gift of heaven. But we know that also there's so many people that need to know this amazing message of your love. So would we be people that set our sights not on the temporary things, but we'd set them on the things that are eternal. God, would you give us a perspective that is fixed on you? I thank you for every person that's watching today that you have a plan and a purpose for them. Would you guide and would you direct them? In Jesus' mighty, powerful name, I pray, amen. Well, good morning and happy New Year's Eve. Uh, I know you're expecting and anticipating the New Year celebration that's about to happen. And I love this time of year because it's always an opportunity for me to recalibrate, reorient my life and get ready for what God has for me next. And I wanna tell you something, no matter what this past year has been like, I know that God has something great for you if you and I can learn to totally trust Him. 2024 could be absolutely amazing. I wanna talk about time orientation because a lot of us live in one of three time frames. We either are past-oriented people, meaning we always look back and either positively or negatively. The, the benefit of that is that we can learn from those experiences and grow and build confidence. The negative is that we can get stuck. Or some of us are present-oriented. We're, we're just so full of the moment. We love every moment and the, the benefit of that is you can have a lot of joy but you can also forget to learn from things you've done in the past and you can forget to plan for the future. And then others of us are future oriented. We're always looking ahead, excited about what is next. And those of us who are like that, we're good planners, but sometimes we forget to just really live in the moment. And so here's what I want for you. I want today to talk about the fact that God has been with you past, present and future. God is above time. He's in all three and how you can learn to navigate all three in order to, to see 2024 be an amazing year for all of us. And so I wanna orient us today in Philippians chapter one, verse three, where Paul writing to the church in Philippi is taking a moment like we are right now to just reflect. And here's what he says. I thank my God every time I remember you. He remembers the past and he's grateful. In all of my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. He's reminded that we are doing this together in the present. Being confident of this, that God who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. He looks ahead as well. So he's grateful for the past. He's excited about the the partnership that they're working together in the present, and he looks forward to what God is gonna do through them in the future. So here are three keys for us as a church family and for you personally, as we navigate and move into 2024. The first is be grateful. Be grateful that God has always been with you. He starts by saying, remember. This, this word in the Greek is to bring to mind, to reflect, to look back and see God in everything. And you say, well, but as I look back, all I see is the negative things. Sometimes that's actually just a perspective. Maybe you feel like God wasn't there. He was, and God is working, and God promises he will make all things new. I love the, the uh, theologian Matthew Henry. He's a, an author that I read. And one day he got robbed. <laughs> and, and so he wrote this down in response to that robbery. He said, first, I'm grateful that he took my wallet and not my life. There, there. see, that's a perspective. Second, he said, I am grateful that even though he took all I had in my wallet, he didn't take what mattered most to me. Another perspective. And then finally, he said, I am grateful that I was the one who was robbed and not I who robbed. You see, there's a powerful thing about looking back. You can choose to see, yes, all the bad things that happen and bad things happen to us. Or you can choose to see the good things that God did even in painful situations. And so as I look back at our past as a church family, I am grateful. I am grateful for you 
Maybe, you know, we've ne never had the a privilege of talking face to face, but you are a part of our church family and I am grateful. And I'm also grateful for the hundred years that got us to where we are today. A hundred years ago, a family named the Cunninghams had a daughter who had black diphtheria and the prognosis was death that in, already in the Niagara region. Uh, some kids had died as a result of black diphtheria. And so the doctors gave them very little hope. But Mrs. Cunningham was a woman of faith and she believed in a God who heals. And the reason she had that confidence is because she read this great book. And as she read the stories of the past, she reminded herself that God is greater than our circumstance. And so she prayed. And as a result, her daughter was healed miraculously. And so people started gathering in their home. And as a result, Central was born. That was the beginning of our church family. It was rooted in this idea that God has always been with us and it builds confidence for us in the present and in the future. And then 23 years ago, Pastor Darren Latham, the senior pastor at the time, and I came to this incredible area, love it, never gonna leave it. 23 years ago came and there was a cry. We want a church that our grandchildren will come to. And so again, we began to make some changes in order to, to engage the next generation. We, we made some major tweaks, not without its challenges, but God was with us through every step and we saw incredible growth and transformation as a result. And then 13 years ago, God gave us a vision, an idea, a dream to build a new facility that would be a community space, not only for our church family, but for the Niagara region. And there were a lot of obstacles. There were obstacles with zoning and permits. And <laughs> I, I could tell you, there were many times when someone would either call me or come into my office and say, Bill, I don't think this is gonna happen. But every time, God provided a miracle, whether it was giving us 20 acres for $3 million, that's a miracle. Giving it in the location where it is today, at the time it was considered in the middle of nowhere. Today it's in the hub, the center of what's happening in Niagara, the growth. God was with us every step of the way. It doesn't mean it wasn't without challenges. And it doesn't mean there were times when I wondered, God, where are you? But the truth was that God never leaves us and he never forsakes us. And so as you look at your past, I hope you take a moment to be grateful for the truth that God was with you. Maybe it didn't go the way you wanted. Maybe things have happened that should not have happened that were traumatic and devastating. But I do know that God never left you and God is with you today, right now. So the key, when you look at the past, is remembering what God has done because this will give you confidence that he will, he will, not only can, he will do it again. The second thing Paul says is, yeah, let's, be thankful for our past, but let's also be in the present. He says, I'm, I, I'm grateful when I remember you, but I'm also grateful when I think of the partnership we have. I love this term because it's this idea that life was never meant to be lived alone. And you and I get to do this together. That word in the Greek is koinonia. It, it's the term meaning of team, of belonging, of purpose. I remember in high school, I really struggled. I had a hard time uh, for a lot of reasons. The biggest reason was because I was a foreigner in many ways. I grew up in Thailand and when I moved back to Canada, I really didn't fit in. But I tried out for a team and I was the smallest kid in the gym and uh, I didn't have a lot of skill, but I was the scrappiest, I guess, because the coach said to me, he said, I can tell you really want to be on this team. And, and so he gave me a spot on the team. I didn't play a lot, but I got a spot. And there was something about belonging that really mattered to be fully present with others in a higher purpose. And I think this is what Paul is talking about. He's saying, be present in what God is doing and join him and others in the great mission of reaching this world with the truth of who Jesus is. I think about this when I think about our building. Uh, I had the privilege of taking my grandson to a parent dance class. Now, again, it was a parent dance class, but my kids couldn't make it, so I got to bring them. And yes, Papa danced and he danced hard, but, but here's the point. It was a Saturday and I remember walking into our building and the building was full of people. There was a volleyball tournament going on. There were some classes going on. People were meeting in the lobby and all our other areas. We were in a dance class. I got to meet people who were brand new to the Niagara region, never met them before. And I was filled with incredible gratitude because we had worked so hard and made great sacrifice to build a space that would reflect the love of God in community. And I had a moment in that lobby where I was just overwhelmed with joy 
that I got to be present in that moment. Yes, it was great. It was with my grandson too, but I was in that moment and God gave us that because we were willing to trust him today. I want to encourage you that there's so many good things happening right now in our church family. Uh, Sunday mornings, we're seeing about 1,800 people show up on a regular basis, and 400 of those are kids, 400 kids every Sunday. And online, we have almost 600 people who watch us either live or uh, on demand later. That is amazing. And if you're one of those online uh, people who watch, thank you so much. Stay with us. Get engaged with us. We saw 95 baptisms 60 kids dedicated. Uh, the only reason it was only 60 is because that's all we could accommodate this year. We got to figure out how to grow that. In our next generation, we saw a 30% growth over the year. In groups, we have almost 1,800 people on average joining in a group with 205 leaders. That is 1,800 people in community doing life together. And our reach is almost 5,000. 5,000 people who would say, Central is my home. They would give of their time, their talent, their treasure. They're in a, in, a, in a group or they come up on a Sunday or they volunteer or they give. It is such a great time to be a part of our church family. God truly is good. And so as I look at the past, I am so grateful that God was, has always been with us He's always been with me and the good, the bad, and the ugly. He's always been there. He's the one constant I can depend on. And that gives me confidence for the future. But I also want to live fully in the present. And the way that we do that in this context is being fully present is inviting the kingdom of God into every situation. I hope you do that this year. I hope that you're not so stuck in your past that you don't see what God is doing right now and you're so eagerly anticipating the future that you miss what God is doing right now. Invite God into every situation in your life, for that is where joy is found. So Paul says, I want you to remember the past. I want you to also live in the present, but I also want you to remember that God is not finished with you yet. That's the future. God still has something amazing for you. Maybe this last year was really difficult. Can I just encourage you? God has something great for you. It's not over. It's not too late. You're not defined by the past. You're not defined by a mistake. You're not defined by something that happened to you. God has something great for you next. And can I encourage you also with the fact that he's not finished with any of us, not as a church, not as individuals. There's something more. Maybe you had a great year. That's awesome. Build on that and let God do even more in you. And so he says, I'm, I'm thankful. As I remember the past, I'm thankful for our partnership because I know that God is gonna bring it to completion. That word completion in the Greek is the word, the, the root word that we get our English word telescope. It's this idea that, that there's still something to be extended. And when it's extended, you can see something ahead of you in the future. This is a powerful truth. And so I don't know what you see in your future, but I just wanna speak maybe prophetically into your life right now. Thank you for inviting me into your living room, wherever you're watching this right now. Here's the truth. God has something amazing for you. Maybe I don't know you really, maybe I don't know uh, your situation, but I do know a, the God who has something amazing for you. Let that capture your heart and your imagination right now because God isn't done with you yet. You're still breathing, <laughs> you're still living. I know you are where you are, but it's for a reason. Let the light shine in the darkness in your life and around you. And for us as a church family, I, I just know God's not done with us yet. I am so grateful for all the things God has done in our 100 plus year history. I'm so grateful for what he's doing right now. It's, it's a great time to be a part of Central Community Church, but I know that he still has so much more. There's still so many people who need to know his love. So many people who still need to know that there's a God who is fighting for them. So many people just waiting on the other side of our obedience. And so when we give this year of our time, our talent, our treasure, when we serve, when we sacrifice, when we say, God, we're gonna put you first, remembering that you did it in the past, you're gonna do it again. We're gonna live with you in the present, believing God, you've got a great future. I believe transformation is gonna to come to the Niagara region through you and I. So let's believe that together. Because here's what I've learned. God's blessing is found walking toward his, not ours, not mine, not yours, his preferred future. And the best part is we get to do it together. So as you prepare uh, for a new year, as we say goodbye to 2023 and we look forward to 2024, my prayer for you is that you would take a moment to seriously take a moment to remember all the good things God has done. 
He has never left you. He has never forsaken you. I pray that you take a moment to invite God into the present, wherever you're at, whatever's, whatever you're going through, invite God. He is the only hope. And as we look ahead to a great future, let's ask God to show us the way. Let's follow him into his preferred future for you and for me and for us. Let's do this together. And in closing, I wanna pray the prayer of blessing that Paul prays in this great book of Philippians. Here's what my blessing to you today from Paul. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge of depth and insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I hope you were encouraged with that amazing word from Pastor Bill and that love would abound more in knowledge and in depth of insight in 2024. Now, speaking of 2024, there's a few things that I do wanna let you know about before you tune out today. Uh, some things that are coming up as we begin the new year. The first is we're starting a brand new series called Take Heart. That when you wanna give up or it feels like things are impossible or you lose hope or you sort of lose your priorities that you can take heart for God has overcome it. And so that brand new series is starting January 7th. We'd love to see you back for that. Also, we have two three-week community groups that are launching the week of January 16th. The first one is called A Place For You, something we've been doing for a while. And this is all about you belonging and getting into a group. And so if you're looking for a first step or a place to start to get connected, that is the best place for you. It's called The Place For You. And then something that's brand new that we're launching in January is something I follow up to that called A Place For More. And it's all about growing deeper and about growing as a leader. And so this is a great follow up to a place for you. All the info is on the screen. And so you could sign up on our groups page by heading over to centralcc.ca slash groups. And all the info is there. Last thing, but not least, the thing I'm really excited about is our 21 days of prayer. And this launches on 6 a.m. on Monday, January the 8th, and will be Monday to Friday from 6 to 7 a.m. And then Saturdays from 9 to 10 a.m. And it will be in person and online at centralcc.ca slash 21 days. And if you have any questions, that is your go-to for more info. You can head over to that site, centralcc.ca slash 21 days. You can download our 21 day prayer guide as a PDF. You can follow along with the devotionals there all month long, but we can't wait to see you there, whether you're joining us in person or online. So that's all from me. I just wanna wish you a happy new year and I can't wait to see you back here next year.